Uh, good evening. Uh, can you all see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So last class we just started with the introduction of the machine learning. So today's class, so we'll proceed with the simple examples uh, and the different types of learnings, right? So <clears throat> there are generally uh, when you say machine learning, so I think we have covered the introduction. So why we need a machine learning? What is the purpose, etc. So there are generally the three types of machine learning. One is we used to call supervised learning and unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So that is what this topic is all about. So the third one is uh, reinforcement learning with will work with the statistics and the agents based systems. So, <clears throat> so what is the purpose of machine learning? So purpose of machine learning is generally at, or three point. One is to make the machines more self-sufficient. That is the first purpose of the machine learning. Second one is to analyze the data. From the analysis, we can go for some kind of recognition, recognize the patterns or predictions or classification. So that is what the main objective of this machine learning. So uh, to uh, understand more about ML, so why we need an ML? So how do machines evaluate? How do machines learn the from the past data? That is what the ML is all about. By seeing this picture, you can easily guess what it does. So what is what does it mean? So what type of image it is? So you can easily guess this is nothing but your fish, right? So the same. So I am changing another image. A person, a guy who is standing here, he is thinking, what is this? So he is saying, he is saying it is a fish. Again, there is another variety of fish is given. So how about this? This is also fish. So how are a brain how are human brains uh, uh, predicting a particular image as a fish meaning our human brains are trained accordingly so because we come across such type of images from our childhoods right so whenever we see a, a, a image which has a head and tail with a type of pair of eyes kind of things we can easily say what type of image it is what type of animal it is what type of flower it is meaning our brain system automatically registers it is as a fish because our brain system has learned so there is a, some learning is happening from the day one similarly how machines what about machines how the machine will train so you cannot a machine cannot say suddenly it is a fish or flower so the same image, what we will do, we will same image will be uh, feeded, same image will be loaded into the machine. After loading, what machine does? We need to train the machine. We need to train, we need to teach the machine. So in terms of what? In terms of data. That is how the machine learning is coming to picture. So whenever we come across uh, some, some kind of images or some kind of data, some kind of incident, our brain will easily predict. But what about machine? Machine may not predict. So what we need to do? So we need to feeding the images into the machine. Then we need to train the machine. So the machine will train. Machine will learn. How the machine will get learned? Machine will get learned from the past data, previous data. So such a way the machine learning is playing a vital role. The learning is happening. Once machine started learns from its all features features when you say features fish say when you say fish fish has a pair of eyes and tails and heads and kind of uh, grills etc so so such things are we from the features from the what we extracted so once feature extraction is done from that we can predict it is a image is going to be a fish that is how machine this is how the human brain and the machine is differentiated so far right so in order to do this there are different types of data is being used the term is used one is we used to call raw data raw data is nothing but your training data training data is before learning whatever the data we use for learning or we used for loading that is nothing but your rare raw data or training data once learning is done so once learning is done the new data 
or the test data has been determined the test data has been generated before learning whatever the data you use is training data that training data is given for the learning again once the learning is done then any type of supervised learning or unsupervised or reinforcement or semi supervised or transfer learning or active learning or brainstorming learning whatever the learning so once the learning is done it is given and it is it is given a test data to determine how will the machine has learned so that is how the difference between your training data and testing data right so so there are some uh, different types of terminologies is being used in this ml domain statistical modeling and machine learning how these two are go hand in hand so machine learning as we know it is algorithm based we can learn from the past data right but statistical learning the statistical modeling is kind of relationship between the variables and the mathematical uh, i mean between the variables by using some mathematical equations so this is completely in terms of we will use completely a uh, data visualization techniques for statistical modeling data visualization techniques meaning always we will use some kind of visualization tools to project the output in terms of statistical modeling right so that is what is statistics modeling this is also sub field of mathematics so we here also we will play with data and attributes there are some different naming conventions can used in machine learning and statistical modeling in machine learning we will use networks graphs whereas there we will use model in my ml we will use weight here we will use parameter here we will use a learning but here we will use a fitting then also here we will use generalization here we will use test set here supervised and unsupervised here directly we will call regression or estimation or technique based so that is what this difference between machine learning and statistical learning so now how does machine learning actually work so how does machine learning actually work by using any one of the learning methods supervised or unsupervised or semi supervised or reinforcement now let's see what do you mean by supervised supervised meaning what we are not observing we are not supervising the person we are simply supervising the machine that is what supervised learning is all about so the machine able to supervise the machine able to learn something that is what supervised learning model is all about how do you supervise the machine how do you supervise the machine learning model by using or by by doing teaching the model teaching is the teaching is nothing but your training so training is the your supervision supervision once the teaching is over meaning if you teach the model by training it that is what training teaching is nothing but training with some data from the labeled data set here we will use only labeled data set labeled data set so if i if i use two two to three images so what it is label 1 label 2 label 3 or c1 c2 c3 c1 may be a cat 1 cat 2 cat 3 so each image with come with the set of labels that is what here learning through labeling mechanism whereas in case of unsupervised we will do learning without labels unlabeled data learning through unlabeled data is nothing but your unsupervised learning so here we will use different set of tables so we will use different set of data sets here so what do you mean by that by each parameter we should know the components of the table we will use the title columns sepal length with the pedal length and pedal with this is this is table is i taken from iris data set so iris data set so this data set you can see the attributes sepal length that flower sepal width and pedal length and pedal width so this is called species so this complete row we called as attributes is a specific set of values we called as observations the individual column this numerical values we used to call numerical values or integer values are called numerical values here you can see some alpha numeric values that is our uh, strings we used to call categorical values there are two types of values numerical values and categorical values so a specific column we called as a feature so this species is a feature here in this iris data set so the supervised learning as we anyway we are going to see in detail in the upcoming modules so but wh what do you mean by supervised learning supervised learning is nothing but a set of training data or labeled data 
in order to predict the pattern so so once the model has been trained so we can easily predict the results with this help of sample data so this supervised learning algorithm learns from the known data set so here the learning is happening through only known data set that is what this supervised learning is all about so known data sets right so there are two types of uh, uh, supervised learning one is we used to call classification another one i used to call is a regression so so classification the output is always is a categorical regression output is always numerical so numerical may be a one or yes or no or sorry one zero or one something like that right then the categories uh, that is i told you this is supervised there are two types of supervised learning main learning one is a classification another is a regression classification is nothing but simply we used to call uh, segmentation or classifying classifying the outputs so regression is nothing but prediction so here clustering is nothing but a grouping dimensionality is nothing but reducing the complexity of the problems right so these are the different types of machine learning algorithms so classification as we know we are learning all the features and labels of the training data in order to classify so simple example is classification is example is here your mail uh, <coughs> spam mails whenever uh, mails are <coughs> coming to the inbox so spam filter so that will use to classify the mail whether it is a mail is <coughs> it is a mail it is, it is a good mail or the spam so ham or spam so it will classify the mail accordingly based on its features right so there are n number of classification techniques are there used in the supervised learning for example there are images are loaded so suppose if the image is by seeing the image we can say it is a men so here that this image is rightly classified so it is a men so it is wrong women is not classified now the women image is given so here it is also rightly classified so under the women label suppose if it is the first image if classified as a woman then meaning there is a wrong classification has happened so then you need to train your model uh, uh, into the next level right so this is a classification and regression right uh, so that is so there are some more uh, uh, fundamental supervised learning algorithms one is a linear regression the second one is logistic regression uh we used to call k nearest neighbor support vector machine decision tree random forest neural network so these are all your supervised learnings so these are all your supervised machine learning technique sms anyway we will see one by one the second one is unsupervised learning unsupervised learning as we know so we here there are no labels are provided so he not to direct the structure learning is happening without any labeling data right here there are two types of uh, examples are given one is dimensionality reduction second one is a clustering right so when unlabeled data is given so then that will be given to the machine learning model then the machine learning model we will predict the pattern so here based on the observation how the prediction is happening based on the past observations past observation here here your prediction is happening right so that is what your unsupervised learning is all about here no training is required we can learn by ourselves based on the observations so here also there are different uh, training techniques are used one is k means a clustering algorithm hierarchical clustering expectation and maximization techniques visualization dimensionality reduction pca kernel pca and locally linear embedding these are some famous unsupervised learning algorithms so here we will see your k means and dimensionality reduction in the upcoming syllabus there are some more techniques supervised learning semi supervised learning meaning which is the combination of both label data and label data time series forecasting all your share market and other all financial marketings are time series forecasting then anomaly detection your fault detection techniques and surveillance cameras etc then active learning this is also another trending area so then the third one is your reinforcement learning reinforcement learning as we know learning is happening through uh, a, a continuous feedback from the agents or continuous feedback from the environment so here learning uh, is happening so for example 
so you take any example so for example you can take any ai uh, robot navigation system so for example robots navigation so the agents are initiated so agent will be in the stage 1 from stage 1 it will move to the stage 2 from stage 2 to stage 3 so from for example i am moving my agent to take a uh, go straight so that is go straight is my instruction from here it will go go straight for 10 meters from here i take take left then from there take right so my robot will move acts or act according to the instructions right so meaning there there is a continuous feedback system continuous feedbacks are taken or collected from its environment so a robot a navigation system robot navigation system your autonomous vehicles surveillance drones so these are all works based on the uh, agents instructions right so uh, feedbacking system so continuous feedbacks are collected in order to move forward so here there is no labeled data and unlabeled data here there is no data concept in the reinforcement learning here we are not training any model here here we'll work based on the environment feedback agents feedback so here the model the we will model the algorithm such that it interacts with the environment and the algorithm does good job if you reward it so <clears throat> that is what your uh, uh, reinforcement learning is all about so as a summary supervised learning meaning so here we are learning structure from the labeled data then the unsupervised learning from the unlabeled data learning from the unlabeled data reinforcement learning is learning based upon the feedback from the environment that is what this learning this is what the learning spectrum is all about <clears throat> that is what this supervised and unsupervised <laughs> in supervised supervised learning meaning it is like a learning with the teacher so but so unsupervised is nothing but without teacher also training data set is here like a teacher teacher is nothing but training data set the existing data set but here machine learns through the observations from the past data here there are two techniques one is a classification another one is the regression classification meaning we will classify something into some other class we will classify it and we will add into some class classifying whether patient has disease or not patient uh, i mean classifying whether email is spam or not these are all classifications regression is nothing but these are classification meaning like yes or no type suppose if regression is nothing but prediction whether it will happen or not if so then what is the ratio whether train will come or not whether we will get the tatkal ticket or not so what what ratio what is the percentage so that is a prediction prediction is predicting the house or property price next to after 10 years or next to 5 years or next to 5 months so predicting the stock market price so these are all the regression so meaning is simply a prediction right so that is what your regression algorithm is all about unsupervised learning we used called clustering another one is association clustering is nothing but we will group the similar items right so for example there are 10 uh, group of objects given there is a 10 animals given out of 10 2 are cats again 3 are dogs again remaining 7 are uh, horse so how how do you classify our cluster so now this out of this 10 so you need to group at uh, cats what is a one cluster this is cat cluster then you group another dogs as one cluster another horse as another one cluster so clusters may be created so groups may be created that is what clustering grouping of similar items then association meaning suppose i i am going to the market i am going to the uh, shopping market so i am planning to buy the bread right so when i planning to buy the bread what they will do they will keep the they will keep the bread and jam and butter at the nearby the bread meaning if the customer is likely to buy the item x then obviously they tended to buy the item y <coughs> suppose <coughs> i am buying the feeding bottle right for baby so if i am buying the feeding bottle i will keep two more rubbers in the nearby the feeding bottles all the rubbers and the bottles uh, other type of uh, bottles are kept nearby 
meaning if people x like to buy item y then definitely they will buy item z also that is what association so one item is depends on the others so you are dis describing discovering the rules so such a concept we used to call it as association a rule minings that is what this x so x and y so this is how this association and clustering works under unsupervised learning there are there are certain application which uses machine learning as a development environment you can see machine learning in the real world so machine learning is used in everywhere internet robotics healthcare biology computer vision nlp databases and computer vision finance etc right everywhere this machine learning is used so machine learning helps in computer vision also because nowadays the images are given as a input to the all the machine learning model so thus your ml algorithm predicts or recognize such images better than humans there are google lens so you can if you give any images suppose you want to find a person with one image if you load that image into the google lens google lens will tell you where it is where the match is found so that will predict to you that will tells you uh, 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 recognize your image better than humans right so there are different uh, uh, nets were used in order to identify such things right alexa net resnet and dense net etc efficient net etc right so there are different ml algorithms are used so same time ml algorithm can learn to generate captions for the images for example i want to name such vegetables in the market so by seeing this image i can easily predict what type of vegetable it is whether it is right see you can see the uh, lady's finger you can see the kiras you can see the tomatoes you can see the uh, potatoes so that your algorithm will tells you your ml algorithm will predict what type of vegetable it is so in the market which is available in the outdoor so such things are caption generators completely uses the neural model as the back end so by seeing images this ml algorithm can learn to answer your questions about images if you load the image and if you ask what it is it will tell you what i what images what is so see what is there in this plate what is the vegetable is there in the plate my neural network says it's a broccoli so the original truth or the ground reality also it's a broccoli so it matches it is it gives you 100% accuracy what color are the shoes of the person so my neural network says brown ground truth also brown what uniform is she is wearing neural net says is shorts ground truth also it is short scout so kind of things so that can be your ml because the training n number of learning has happened <coughs> right so now ml algorithm can learn to translate the text so all the translation google translate completely works on uh, ml nlp right then summarization text summarization how many words are there in the paragraph how many repetitive words or unique words etc these are all your ml applications then your search and find your information uh, retrieval there also your ml is used then speech processing all your skype completely works based on your mls then your it, uh, machine learning helps chemistry even in order to understand the new molecular structures and synthesize the new molecular structures then periodic table so these are the different uh, milestones different machine learning milestone which started in the year 1752 1752 now uh, 2022 right so this is started in the year of 1750 like a base base theorem least squares lagrange theorem etc then uh, 1950 to 60 your all your all other basic machine learning algorithms started introduced reinforcement learning started introduced then discriminative analysis uh, turing test have started then 70s to 80s all your uh, differentiations k nearest your clustering genetic algorithm all your heuristic meta heuristic approaches are started then 80s to 90s your neurocognition back propagation decision tree neural networks reinforcement have started 
the 90s to 2000 support vector machine bayesian random forest cnn lstm have started 2000 to 2010 your complete data driven ml was initiated then your ml based algorithms like netflix challenge your movie recommendation system deep learning all your gpu based systems are introduced in the year 2000 to 2010 2010 to 2020 nowadays complete auto ml your various software framework pytorch sensor flow etc then drones self driving cars autonomous vehicles av vehicles so these are all started in recent years so now we will completely move on to the next level of ais right this is how the complete uh, ml uh, uh, milestones right so now how do you implement it practice it where do you start where do you end first you need to understand the problem so whatever the problem you take you need to understand the domain then with the prior knowledge and the goals once the problems are identified then you need to do the integration then data selection then cleaning and pre processing should take place then you should identify the learning model learning is nothing but machine learning models then interpret the result then consolidate and deploy the discovery of knowledge this is what the final rate is a prediction or classification right so that is what your uh, ml in practice the same thing should be in loop mode right so there are some libraries and frameworks which are readily available for python i think you know so pybrain is one of the library so uh, you can use such uh, python frameworks pyml again a skykit learn library then tensorflow so you can use any one of these libraries in order to uh, build your mls right so there are some uh, current uh, active data sets which are available in the market so you can use these links directly i copied the link so you see a repository gaggle and cocodesk so here you can uh, you download the all the current data sets so for the projects there are some say, online ebooks i have suggested so you can click the dial link directly you will get some of the ebooks for ml these are some three interesting papers uh, which is published in recent years so you can you can uh, whenever you have free time you can just have a look at it in this paper so how the ml is used in the real time this is useful material i think this is probably enough for now so so this is how this ml is all about so in the next class what we will do so i'll be taking you i think only just 5:30 so anyway we'll then we'll see one more topic also so that is how the introduction is all about so the next one is uh, i'll be taking you to the uh, learning what is a learning components of learning so still we have 20 minutes we'll finish it off so as you know ai ai is one of the uh, 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 technique or algorithm or the area or the domain in order to imitate the human behavior that is why the this uh, this technique has been come up then machine learning is a subset of ai deep learning is also subset of machine learning right so there are different areas as you know ml nlp expert system vision speech planning and robotics so these are all the various areas which is comes under ai right so this is these are some ai applications as you shown earlier so there are different autonomous rovers this is a telescope scheduling is also one of the ai application then autonomous planning and scheduling analysis of data then image analysis and enhancement pattern recognition see here the yeah, nothing was visible but here we can able to predict what type of what type of letters it is behind the screen so just pattern was recognized so these are all ai application just for your understanding then autonomous vehicle control under the transportation then pedestrian deduction whether the people are moving across the road so something like that so then games basic games so how your ai is used then 
games chess board robotic toys etc right so these are all basic uh, your ai applications right now what do you mean by learning so we should know we are talking about learning a model learning a model what do you mean by learning learning is nothing but a computer program so learning is a computer program uh, which is nothing but a, 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 a collect the knowledge from the past data that is what the learning is all about so this kind of learning model may be a predictive or descriptive if you say predictive meaning we are going to make predictions in the future that is what predictive if you say descriptive then the knowledge from the data is are gained that is what descriptive so knowledge meaning from the data meaning from the data set so we will feed the data set as a input right so that is what this model is all about so uh, learning when you say learning so learning can be defined with three terminologies one is your t task another one is the p performance measure third one is experience task experience tpe so learning is nothing but a computer program is said to learn from the experience e with respect to some classes of t and the performance measure p so suppose if there is a n number of tasks are given then their performance measures are to be monitored finally the experience also it is measured so that is what learning is all about learning a computer program which learns from experience which learns experience meaning the past data past experience past observation whether tomorrow rainfall will happen whether the landslide will happen or not whether volcano will come or not whether uh, what do you call whether uh, uh, something like that so the predictions right so <clears throat> so that is how this uh, uh, learning is all about for example a handwritten recognition problem handwriting recognition learning problem there are or 100 images have written so like uh, one two handwritten digits were written so in the sheet so also computer generated digits also might be there so we need to detect the handwritten digits so in this case task t is the thing we're recognizing and classifying the handwritten words within the image that is your task performance meaning percentage of words correctly classified how many letters are there in this given image that is the performance p then training experience is nothing but the data set of handwritten words with the given classification so how many data sets are predicted or trained that is what tpe so we will whatever you learning algorithm models you develop we will work on tpe task and performance and training experience same robot driving learning problem driving on highways using vision sensor is a task average distance traveled before the error is nothing but performance training is nothing but a recording comments based on the human without any human errors so this is how this simple learning examples there are different type, different components of learning we used to call data storage, abstraction, generalization and evaluation. Data storage is nothing but, so these are the four stages of learning. For learning ML model, machine learning model, we you need a data first, that is what data. Where will you store the data? We will store the data in the data storage, that is the first point. Second point is nothing but concept. Concept is nothing but set of objects or group of object is nothing but a concept for example 10 dogs images were given five cat images were given so that is a group of concept so that is what the concept so here concept is always is abstraction based you will we will hide the essential data that is what concept then the third one is inference so inference meaning hypothesis creation so hypothesis creation from this given data set or given proof of concept what we are going to infer what we are going to discover from this so that is what your inference finally so for example f of f is nothing but x tends to y so what we will infer x tends to y x what do you mean by x and what do you mean by y so this inferences are to be evaluated that is the next step that is what evaluation right? so this is what the components of learning system that is what a learning. 
so concept learning concept learning meaning so we learn the concept from the example that is what concept learning this concept learning is inferring inferring of a boolean valued function from the training example of its input and output based on the input and output we will infer the boolean valued function yes or no when you say concept concept is nothing but boolean valued function defined over large set of objects that is what concept concept learning is nothing but inferring boolean valued function from the training example of input and output of the function set of object for example 10 dog images five fish images if i am giving then you can say that is a concept meaning which is a set of group of object learning the same set of images are given to the learning model finally you are predicting a fish or animal or cat then you can say that is concept learning there is a learning is happening with the help of concept so now this this example there is an uh, 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 enjoy sports example is given enjoy sport is nothing but series of hypothesis for example whether you like to enjoy the sports or not there are different scenarios given there are different attributes are given sky air temperature humidity water and forecasting so there are six parameters are given so now these six parameters are classified when you say sky sky has three parameter what type of situation may happen values sunny may happen cloudy may happen rainy air temperature is nothing but warm condition cold condition humidity normal and high wind strong and heavy sorry weak so water is nothing but warm and cold forecasting is nothing but same climate or some other climate changes so now these are the values of the variable now you can use so for example how many predictions may be possible so now this is there are six attributes in this table 1 2 3 so 3 into here air temperature is 2 3 into 2 into again humidity is 2 again wind is 2 again water is 2 again forecasting is 2 so when you multiply all these things so you will get some x and y is that number of predictions for that given target variable enjoy sport so now this enjoy sports is the target function target function is nothing but enjoy sports so whether uh, sharukh khan is likely to enjoy this sports or not that is a given question so when sharukh khan will come out of the house and he will enjoy the sports so the first condition there are three conditions when sky is sunny and warm normal strong warm and forecasting is same then he will enjoy this post that is the first option the same sunny climate warm humidity high strong water is also warm then he will come out instead of normal humidity even if humidity is high then he will come out then if it is a rainy season then obviously he may not come out no one will come out for enjoying sports then another one again this sunny warm high strong warm and change so then he will come out so this whether the person x y in y is will enjoy the sports or not that is what this concept is all about this is what concept we used to write like c of c of sunny comma warm comma normal comma strong comma warm comma same tends to enjoy sports of s yes. so meaning when these condition are satisfies then enjoy sports is s yes. and s yes. this this is a hypothesis one accordingly hypothesis 2 3 4 so this is how the concept learning the end outcome is nothing but a concept right so this is how this target function f is function is nothing but x tends to y training example there are different scenarios given x1 y1 x2 y2 up to x and y1 so now the sample hypothesis set h is given to the learning algorithm finally the high final hypothesis is being generated right so this target function so with these details what is the exact knowledge to be learned from the training experience so that is nothing but your target function target function needs to be identified f is equal to x tends to y assume there is a, this is a loan application example 
so if there are n number of people applying for a loan that is x x to x is nothing but x1 x2 x3 x4 up to xn meaning there are n number of applicants are applying for loan y is nothing but status of loan so how many of them applications are filed and updated that is y so y is nothing but y1 y2 y3 up to yn so that is what this target function is all about if applications are approved filed then the, there is a possibility for loan that is what extends to y so then followed by there are some issues in the machine learning once this learning is fitted properly then you need to identify with that we cannot stop we need to identify some issues then meaning in terms of what is what type of algorithm can be used for uh, representing a problem then how much training data is sufficient what is the minimum knowledge is required to implement this concept learning what is the best strategy used for training what type of function we should use how can learner automatically learns from the training for target functions so these are there are n number of issues are being involved so once the learning system is created you need to think about all these perspective so that you will get the proper accuracy for that respective problem so that is how this machine learning concept learning is works right so this is how the concept learning and learning problems the first topic is a learning problem the second one is your perspectives and issues third one is concept learning this is how these three introductions so next class we will see some version spaces candidate elimination inductive bias these three topics in the next class right so these are all some kind of uh, like as theoretical proofs so we will finish this first then we'll move on to these all these algorithms i think the syllabus needs to be modified so they have kept it like a rough there is no proper flow right okay yeah so that's all about the introduction and the uh, learning learning problems and concept learning in the next week we will start with the other three two or two to three topics so okay thank you all so you all can leave thank you happy weekend thank you